Good morning and welcome to worship at Wycliffe on this, the 28th day of June, 2020. I'm the Reverend Dr. Garrett Bug, and I'm glad to welcome you, whether you're a longtime member, a longtime attendee, or a brand new visitor joining us online for the first time. We're glad you're here, and we hope that in the course of this service, you find the good news of Jesus Christ. As we begin worship today, I do want to remind you that we will celebrate communion not on July 5th, but on July 12th, uh, so that's in two weeks. Uh, and I do want to remind you also to stay tuned at the end of this video service for a few announcements that will come up on the screen, information about our Wednesday afternoon Zoom check-in hour and the Monday night women's book club that meets. If you're interested in supporting the mission and ministry of Wycliffe, you may do so in one of three ways. You may text the word Wycliffe to 73256, and uh, you'll be prompted to uh, continue the process. You may go to our website, WycliffePresbyterian.org, or you may mail in a uh, contribution to the church office. We're happy to uh, report that throughout the time of COVID-19, your generosity has allowed us to create the COVID-19 Assistance Fund to provide direct assistance to those in need. Likewise, our regular work of helping uh, families and men and women with utility payments continues, as well as our, our gifts and participation in St. Columba Ecumenical Ministries as we seek to assist them as they feed and reach out to the homeless population in Virginia Beach and Norfolk. Do consider a contribution. As we prepare for worship, let us pray. Lord, the noise around us is loud and the distractions intense. We yearn to hear your voice in order to know of your presence and hear again your covenant promise. Quiet our busy minds. Calm our anxious hearts. Come to us now and speak, for we are listening. Amen. Hear these words from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah. There have been prophets long before you and I were ever born. They have prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms. They have spoken about war, trouble, and plague. But what if a prophet says peace will come? And suppose peace really does come. Only then will he be recognized as a prophet truly sent by the Lord. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 40th verse. Listen for the word of God. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Not a long scripture passage this week. We come to the end of what scholars like to call the missionary discourses as Jesus sends out the twelve disciples having given them authority to go and share the good news in Christ's name. Whoever welcomes me, or whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me, Jesus says. On the one hand, as we look at these verses, we might immediately think that Jesus is telling us something to do. We might hear these words as a commandment to be hospitable to those who come into our orbit, who come knock on our doors, and who come in and out of our lives. We might not be entirely wrong with that train of thought. 
But as one New Testament scholar mentions, starting this passage and thinking about this passage with the question, what does this text tell me to do, might be the wrong question to begin with. After all, those of you who have a lot of experience reading the scriptures and dealing with prophets will know that a prophet was usually rejected and sent away. The reward of the righteous is really ambiguous. We don't know what that means. In fact, Jesus isn't very clear about what reward he's offering at all. But even more than that, as we come and look back again at verse 40, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. It's clear that Jesus is still giving those disciples instructions as they are sent out. And as we look at the meaning of the passage and put it in its larger context with the rest of the missionary lesson, what we're hearing is Jesus saying you can't spend your entire ministry in his name inside of your own home or inside your own house. The address is to those disciples who are being sent and it comes from Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead, who in response to offering the good news was killed for it. He says to them, you're going to go and you will encounter danger. It will not all be sunshine and roses, but you will find welcome. And when you do, those that welcome you, disciples, welcome the Lord. And along with the Lord Jesus Christ, they welcome God the Father. You will find people who are willing to welcome you. But only if you step outside of your comfort zone and dare to share the good news of Christ with those who aren't like yourselves. It's been an interesting week at our house. Why, just the other day, as I was fixing a screen in the sunroom, I heard a loud thud. And two different species of birds who were apparently fighting or maybe doing something else in midair hit the window and fell down stunned on the ground. That happened the afternoon after. While grilling out, we looked over and noticed that in Amelia and Joey's little soccer net in the backyard, something was moving. In that net, there was a little bunny who had gotten caught up, tried to chew his way out, but ended up tangling himself badly in the net. We ended up having to cut him out, and the hole in the net is about three times the size of the bunny. We weren't sure if he would make it. But after about ten minutes on the ground, breathing heavily, he stood up and hopped away. Jesus tells his disciples and encourages them to go out, reminding them that while they may not be welcomed everywhere, when they take a risk and share the good news to the world, they will find welcome. You will find it too. As you share the good news of Jesus Christ, as you learn to go out and talk to your neighbors as you go out and talk with those people you don't know. Of course, all those things in this day and age you have to do from a distance of at least six feet, likely wearing a mask. Do it anyway. This passage is addressed to those disciples that Jesus Christ sends out into the world. It's addressed to you and me. As one final encouragement, as Jesus sends us out with his authority to go and make a difference in this world that he's made, there will be welcome for us. 
And as Jesus said much earlier, if there's not, we shake the dust off our feet and keep on moving. Because sharing the good news of Jesus Christ can't wait. It's needed now in our communities, on our streets, in our homes, and in our hearts. Amen. Prayer is a conversation with God. We join our hearts and voices to offer our prayers to God. Living and holy God, we rejoice that you have called us into new life, that you have equipped us to follow you. We praise you for the reflections of that new life in creation, in the ministry of your church, in the sacrifice of those who serve, in the gift of those who love and nurture us. You are the giver of new life and renewed hope. Knowing this, we bring our prayers for the nations of this world and for their leaders, both elected and appointed. We bring our prayers for our nations and our leaders here. We bring our prayers for all those who are sick and grieving. We bring our prayers for our community and for those we know who have particular needs. And I invite you now in your homes or wherever you're watching to name those that you know who have particular needs. We praise you that you call us to new life and to follow you with joy and gladness. By your Spirit, lift us from doubt and despair and set our feet on your holy way that our lives may be signs of your life and that all we have may show others your love. Remembering the great needs of this world, we recall that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
My friends, as God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, and crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.